I will on purpose set design constraints to work within. I don't know, just some weird challenge to myself. And um, do you feel like you get a better product from doing that? It's but just more satisfying to me. So it's like I have to use like different parts of my brain at the same time. And that's where I'm like really competitive with myself. What's up guys? I'm Jake from Prism Supply. Welcome to our series, My Garage. Today, we're in Long Beach, California, featuring my friend, Oliver Jones, AKA The Cut Rate. Oliver is a designer and motorcycle builder and collector of anything vintage from parts to apparel. Oliver, give us a rundown of the space overall. So you live above, you work below. We basically just store bikes and parts wherever we can find space for them <laughs> at this point. Um, a block away from the beach and you have this incredible space it's, right it's here. A, it's a little beach. hidden gem that I've got my claws dug into very deep. It's gonna take a lot for me to get out of this place. It is I so mean, layered. Physically and like I, I'll never find a space like this again. Let's say I think it was my junior year in college. I was in school for graphic design. Went to Japan for a car show. And yeah, I was there for two days and I was like, yep, that's it. I stayed there for about three years, three and a half years. like. Pretty much straight through, had my own place and everything. Did you learn the language? Yeah, I, I didn't know anything when I went there the first time. I couldn't I couldn't speak, I couldn't write, I couldn't do anything. And just did you did you learn to write? Yeah, or I'm read. I'm, I'm fluent speaking. I'm totally fluent now. Crazy. So how'd you get into motorcycles? It was when you were in <clears throat> Japan, right? Yeah. So I had zero motorcycle experience prior to Japan. The amount of motorcycles was staggering. Like. And when I saw those things, I was like, man, I don't even know what this is, but man, I want to build one of these things. I moved back, got a space, had a garage, 75 piece toolkit, right. grinder, let's do it. And found this bike, guy's like, hey, you want to test ride this thing? I'm like, Ugh, I'll try. <laughs> like, you know, rode that thing all night long. Like was- You're like, just like, I'm never getting off this bike. Yeah, I'm like, this is so fun, so fun. And was like, came home that night, parked it, was like, all right, let's go. Open the tool chest. By the morning, by the time the sun came up, that thing was literally a pile of parts. And yeah, man, I just started. I literally was just like, I don't know what this is, but I don't think I need it. Cut it off. Like, you know, like I knew cars and I knew bicycles and motorcycle is basically that. <laughs> so I was like, cool, I'll figure it out. I went to my one friend who like is a certified welder. And I was like, dude, show me how to weld. And he's like, sit down. I did it for like, two hours nonstop at his house and then like went and bought a welder and then just sat there and just did got it. good at just it. maybe not even got good at it at first. <laughs> but, you know I, I think actually a lot of advantage to this was I had no limitations on what I what was the right way or wrong way to do something I was just like literally going off of like I think this is what I want and I think I can make it work and no one was really telling me you can't that was my first bike but I would say before I even finished the thing, I was like, I need a, another, I need another one to start, or I need one to ride while I'm building this. I start hanging out with other people riding. I'm gonna get a Sportster. I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. And I got a 86, 883, four speed Sportster. I think I rode it home and the same thing, tore it down first day. I'd say from that bike is where I really sort of like honed my aesthetic for the rest of the bikes. Like, you can definitely look at that bike and be like, ah, I get it. Yeah, if you were to ask me what I think your style is, and correct me if I'm wrong, it would be like high-performance choppers. Essentially, Minimalistic, yeah. high-performance choppers. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Man, I just like that balance of like, the front end just has a visual lightness to it. The rear has a tight sort of drag bikey kind of weight to it. The shop shop. Yeah. This is uh, where the real magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> so in this shop, mm -hmm. you do everything from engine building to yes. welding, everything. fabricating, everything. machining, yes. everything. I Sometimes I look back and I'm like, I look back at the bikes finished and I'm like, damn, that actually came out of this place. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, kind of surprised. Cause like, I mean, I'll be, I'll be the first one to admit, like right. I've got a lot of like, stuff that doesn't work so good, but it's like what I got or what I can afford until I can like upgrade and go to something better. Lathe work, mill work, fab, sheet metal stuff, 
drilling, buffing, grinding, all that stuff down there. That's the dirty side. It's all one dirty side, but it's, uh, <laughs> I just try to keep like as much of that down there as I can. The whole place is just like layered with things everywhere. It is, <laughs> it is. Like if it's hanging up, it means something to me. Music stuff mixed in with motorcycle stuff because it's all, all relevant to me. The Sam Hain Gigi Allen poster is as important as the Gary Nixon to me. Right. It's the same, like they're totally different, but they mean the same thing in my life. All of these shelves are literally for bikes that are already like in my mind done. <laughs> like I can see them finished. It's just a matter of time. So this, these two shelves are that bike right there, that roller. This is a knucklehead project. This is another FXR project. This is a 2003 Dyna project. This is a 91 Dyna project. <laughs> and then, you know, eventually when space clears up, that then moves out here and the process starts again. Every once in a while, just pull some parts off a shelf and just kind of lay them next to the bike. So it's just something else that I can be like, ah, okay, I see where this is gonna go. Just looking at it like that before it's done is like really nice. Yeah, this thing is a weird um, hybrid of different things. The motor's one-off, like experimental 100-inch XR hmm. motor. Exhaust is from scratch, intakes are from scratch. Mert Law Will, Sportster heads, like welded and re-drilled and fitted to a big inch Evo motor. I like using stuff that is um, somewhat recognizable. Like just at a glance, you're like, ah, oh, that looks like a off-the-shelf piece, but it's not. Right. You know, it's not like, you know, you can tell when someone like leaves their welds and like, oh, that's, they made that obviously, like, cool. I like using a part where it's like, yeah, this is made 100%, even the flanges made from, total from scratch, used like that much of the muffler because this little bit is kind of recognizable to certain people. And they're like, oh, well, I didn't know they made those pipes. And they're like, they didn't. Right. I know you probably have to have a, an embarrassing motorcycle story. Going back to that sports theater, we were shooting it and this hot rotted motor, like all that, super short wheelbase, really small bars, all that. So I had lots of like hairy close calls on that bike. Like it was way too fast for what it was and it accelerated about 10 times faster than it slowed down. One time when we were shooting that bike actually for a magazine, so basically I'm like dumping the clutch, it's spinning the back tire, smoking, doing a wheelie burnout at the same time. You know, of course, like for a photo shoot, like one more time, just one more, one more. And every time I'm like, I'm gonna get this wheel a little higher. And yep. you know, just tire probably started to get a little sticky. And I think on one of the last ones, I just maybe let it out a little too much or whatever, did the burnout and just, it went and just looped out on me. I mean, you know, honestly, it really didn't even bruise my ego that much. I was shooting with friends. It was almost funny. We were just laughing about it. So now we're upstairs and get to see your incredible shirt collection. Walk me through some of your favorite shirts. So this one is a original John Jordan, um, creative design specialties. John did this original in 1979. Who's John? John Jordan is a old, old timer friend of mine who's probably one of the pioneers of like chopper shirts. Uh, from the mid 60s all the way through uh, sort of today almost. He started printing shirts in the mid 60s with his friends, like figured out like how to do screen printing themselves sort of. Pre-82 was like sort of a little bit of a free for all in terms of Harley shirts. Huh. You could print, you could print whatever you wanted essentially and have no kickback from the factory. After 82, licensing became a thing. Uh, I got another Jordan, 75th anniversary, 1978. Another cool um, pan head. And then this is probably one of my favorites. This is a Jordan. Um, he would run these test print shirts when he was printing graphics, like just to get make sure all the prints were right. Um, and he would, from time to time, give them to people, sell them, whatever. But um, yeah, the number one logo. I mean, this thing's beat, but it's awesome. Cool. So yeah, these are these are some of my favorites. No, they're not for sale. <laughs> Don't, Don't ask. ask. <laughs> right, collecting these old shirts, why is that special to you? Each one has a story. What's some of this stuff relates directly back to me as a child. Like it's up the street from where I grew up. It's also, you know, it's it's inspiring stuff. Like this stuff motivates me, you know, like 
graphics and, and design is my background. So Oliver, you do vintage stuff as well as newer stuff too. This is a, uh, you said 2020? 2020 Lowrider S. Crazy. What was, your, uh, what was your thoughts behind building this bike? Up until this point, I had never done a new bike, but I thought, well, rather than taking off every part of this stock bike and replacing it with an aftermarket part, I wanna harken back to like a special spot in my heart, which is like the sort of 90s special edition bikes. So I was like, well, Born Free has become such a cultural part of this whole thing now. I'm like, I wanna build a Born Free special edition. The whole goal was to keep it as OEM looking custom as possible. But there's so much work done to it. So much work done to it. Don't go too tall on the risers because the factory wouldn't do that. Like it's not DOT. Kept um, like the mirrors on. Yeah, kept the mirrors. I even kept the stickers on the mirrors. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> you used all the factory stuff. I will on purpose set design constraints to work within. I don't know, just some weird challenge to myself. And um, do you feel like you get a better product from doing that? It's Boys. just more satisfying to me. So it's like I have to use like different parts of my brain at the same time. And that's where I'm like really competitive with myself. So is this the bike you ride the most? In all honesty, like it's my favorite bike I own right now. And I mean, it goes, it handles, it does everything. It works, it's new, it doesn't leak, it doesn't shake. It's like- You push the button and go. Yeah, yeah it's perfect. But from our peer group, like, a new bike, like that's a weird thing. You know, and we're like, oh, unless it's old, it's not cool, right? Right. So like, you gotta bridge that gap. Exactly. So for somebody that's trying to get into building a motorcycle or collecting, what kind of advice would you give them? <sighs> Save a lot of money. <laughs> um, you know, my only in advice that I can give is just do it, like just, you know, dive in. Literally just dive in. Like, you're gonna mess up, you're gonna make mistakes, but you'll learn from them, hopefully. What benefited me the most was not really having, like, the right answers all the time. Like, just figuring it out on my own actually produced, like, a cooler mm -hmm. end result. That's it for this episode of My Garage. Oliver, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, man, I appreciate it. Thanks your, for coming out. Your space is incredible. Thanks for opening up the doors for us. Where can we find you? Um, at this point, just Instagram. It's uh, at the cut rate. That's it. That's it. Simple as that. Yep. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you.